Yeah, so last week you got the boat tied up in the marina at La Playita. Yeah, it seems like a simple thing to do, but the problem we had was they had uh, 220 volt or 240 volt and uh, 50 hertz is what we needed for power, and there's only 110 volt, 60 hertz. They said they had 240, but I wasn't sure what the hertz was, so I wasn't going to take a chance. Yeah, there was so much to do to get the boat ready. We had to switch everything off because of the lack of solar power. We couldn't leave fridges on and stuff like that because there's just not enough sunlight. So yeah, it was a it was a massive undertaking to get the boat ready to be to be left for eight days, you know, without anybody basically taking care of it. Yeah, so busy doing our washing, uh, just doing all the last bit of washing and our towels and stuff. Trevor's just gone to the office to have a look. Uh, we'll just ask him some questions and taken our frozen stuff with Elias to his boat and he's going to kindly keep our frozen stuff for us. Defrosting, going to do all these fridges today and clear the bar fridge. Doing our last bit of veggies in the oven, a bit of some good old roast veg, our leftovers and that's what we're going to have for lunch and just doing our thing. So yeah, I've been busy since early this morning. Looks like it's going to rain. It's quite muggy, but uh, the skies look pretty dark. But um, if we can just stay away a little bit and need to get my washing done, I'll be super happy. I can't believe we're actually going to go and have our appointment on Friday for visa. And just really holding thumbs that we get right with that. And uh, we walk out with, with a visa. That'll be tremendous. Anyway. Yeah, the big cleanup, eh? nothing's ever easy. Defrosting everything so we can switch everything off so we don't need to put the power on. I'm not sure if they're 220 is 50 kilohertz or 60, so I'm not gonna plug it in. It's not worth it, the freaking risk and then blowing something up. A couple of spits in a spot. A lot of surge in this freaking harbor. I'm actually sorry I didn't go to Flamingo. A lot of movement on these ropes here. It's crazy. That's going to wear the ropes for sure. Put just about every single rope that we've got on the boat out here because the surge is seriously bad here. So yeah, we've got somebody coming to check up every day. Uh, Elias. Hopefully, hopefully all goes well. Some shitty weather coming in two days time so. Yeah old girl, first time we off her. First time I'm going to spend the night off the boat in almost two years. It's crazy. On our way to Costa Rica, fingers crossed. Hoping to hell that the uh, American Embassy sees our story and gives us our visa so we can take her back to uh, Miami. If not sell her before then. Yeah, we've been hiding out for the last couple of days. Yeah, we'd hope to travel down to Golfito to see the Parley guys, but the hurricane and the weather had washed away all the internal roads, so yeah, we were stuck at the hotel. It's a bit uh, run down, but yeah, you know, it'll do. Yeah, this is the outside area of the hotel. Sun shining for the first time in three days, which is like a five-star rated hotel and price-wise. It's nowhere near the standard of the five-star hotels we have back home, that's for sure. At least you got some outside place to walk around. The other place we were in for two days is just like a, just a box. Now we moved from the other hotel hoping for a bit of outdoor and a bit of swimming activities, but the weather had taken care of that. Yeah, so here we are in a waiting room. On the other side of town, after a ride to the US Embassy, my visa they can't give me an update on. Kerry's was issued. It was supposed to have been, both of ours were supposed to have been here at three o'clock yesterday afternoon. <laughs> they weren't. We went to the US Embassy this morning to find out and they reckon Kerry's was here. Uh, mine they don't know and there's no guarantee where it is. And we especially asked them to, to have them ready yesterday because we're flying tomorrow. And uh, yeah, they promised. So we're gonna wait here until 
five this afternoon when there's apparently another delivery. Nobody can tell us if it's coming or not. And um, if it doesn't arrive here this afternoon, our flights are out the window. We've got the boat tied up in the jetty, booked only until tomorrow. What a mess. Fun and games and traveling. It's definitely no fun. Yeah, without our passports, we were absolutely stuck and there was nothing we could do. We just had to wait. We had no chance of getting back to Panama without the passport, so whatever happened was going to happen. We found a really nice little coffee shop with a really nice owner and spent seven hours waiting to the end of the day, holding thumbs the whole time that our passports were going to arrive. Yeah, a few tasty treats and a good couple of cups of coffee later, a miracle happened. Five minutes before closing time, the passports arrived. I've never been so happy to see our green mambas in my life. Anyway, we managed to get onto our flights. We were delayed by four hours, but we got back to Panama City in the evening, got onto the boat, and then the next morning headed straight out to uh, Tobago Island. So back, back to the maintenance again, it never stops. Yeah, I was running the motors yesterday before we go through the canal. I was giving them a full run and noticed that the starboard motor is running slightly warmer than the port motor. And uh, when I gave her gears, uh, she went up to sort of 83. They normally run at 79, 80. So decided to have a check on this. We lost an impeller a little while back on the starboard motor, quite a long time back actually. And she's always been running like a degree warmer, um, just under light load and yesterday when I pushed her she went up to 83 the other stand stays at 80 so suspected that there's some impeller pieces in the starboard motor so pulling off the the uh, the hoses and to the entrance of the heat exchanger and yeah just loosen some of the bolts and yeah there's one piece of impeller that's already fallen out of a previous impeller so yeah I've got a feeling that there's a few more of them inside here so Basically taking off the bolt on the on this uh, on the front of the uh, heat exchanger, and um, yeah, we'll see now. But yeah, these are the little nitty gritty things that you just got to keep an eye on. Just now, you need to go in, and you get a storm or something, and you got to go hard, and and you're limited in your power, or you start to overheat, and you know these things. It's all cool when everything's good, but these problems always manifest themselves when you're under pressure. And uh, I'd rather have a look at it now and make sure everything's okay. So, just hoping this comes off. Oh my God, have a look at that. Have a look at that. There's a heap of impeller in there. Just have a look at that. Holy shit. Thank goodness I did this. Have a look at that. Oh my hat. What's that? I suspected that this was the problem. Jesus. Where is it? That's those are the pieces of the previous impeller stuck in the heat exchanger. And that's why you've got to watch your temperatures all the time. And it's the problem we have on the gen set because we don't have a manual temperature gauge. It's got an automatic automatic shut off. So because this has got gauges and you can see your temperature fluctuating, you get uh you get an early warning of this kind of nonsense happening. So, yeah, never ends on these boats. Always something to do. You can see all these pieces of impeller that have been stuck in the capillaries. And I'll give this, this thing a bit of a clean as well. But unfreaking believable. I mean, look at this. That's crazy. So, yeah, I'm going to keep your eye on everything. Now, so what I'm doing now is just putting a skewer stick through all the apertures just to check that it's that all of them are clean. Kerry, can you bring me a can you bring me a little just a that, that little red knife? Just cleaning up the front face. That looks a little bit better. Oh, they all look good. Okay, start her up.
good. Yeah, it's super important because we're going into the Caribbean now, not going backwards. Yeah, and just two up, you can't afford to have mix-ups and, and, and problems. And yeah, that could have led to a problem if you're forced to go hard and then you have an overheating problem, which could also cause damage to the motor. So yeah, important just to keep stuff all in line. Uh, back at Tobago, did another dive and everything on the boat because of uh, while we were away doing that visa story. Bit of a noisy aircraft. Beautiful setting. So we're going to do a quick jaunt on shore. Go and maybe have a lunch. Just relax. We've had all sorts of nonsense with the generator. And, oh man, it just hasn't stopped the last while. Yeah, the generator was still giving us problems and even though I had a mechanic in to do the heads and check the valve clearances when we got back, we were still having problems. Yeah, our trip to San Jose had proven to be a more stressful than, than running the boat. We'd expected to have a relaxing time at a nice hotel with a swimming pool and good weather and just kick back, do some editing and just have a, a relax. But uh, yeah, that hadn't worked out that way and in actual fact it had been more stressful than anything else. Yeah, we needed a day out, just some time just to get off the boat and just walk around and just relax. Quaint little place. All the ferries and the military personnel here, so... Yeah, <clears throat> take a little joint and see what it's all about. Very quaint in this spot. Police station, very neat. Oh, this is right up your alley, the spa. Oh, yeah, that's why it's so nice. No, it costs twice as much. <laughs> yeah, we've been there, done that. A lot better than what it looks from the side. The beaches. Thunder clouds rolling in already. <laughs> yeah, I think the tourist industry been hit pretty hard, yeah. So they're all busy trying to get stuff done. Guys are working. The new season's starting to come up now, so. Yeah, rainy season ends in about a couple of weeks time, so. Everybody get it gearing up for the tourists to arrive. Come a little lookout area here in Tobago. Gosh, it's quaint. It's so neat. You feel like you're on a, I don't know, like in Greece or somewhere. I don't know, it's just very pretty, very quaint, very neat. You know, it's run down little bits here and there, but I mean, really, to the other places we've seen and uh, they've got here. Yeah, they're working a lot on, on everything I see. You hear grinders and sea workers. So, the big marlin. Selfish, babe. Oh, selfish. Sorry. You uh, should know uh, by now. Okay, I just, all right. I think it's lovely. You feel like you're on holiday when you come on this little island. Really, you do. You, you really do feel like you're somewhere else in the world. So it's not exactly like the top of the market, the top of the market holiday destination. But after being stuck in a hotel room and on the boat for like two weeks solid, <laughs> geez, this is like Shangri-La. So Auntie Cherry in the Bali. Oh my God, I just got one in the gut. Auntie Cherry in the Bali. <laughs> on holiday in Tobago. Jeez, I tell you what, this last while has been something else. Yeah. 
horrible. Stories with the gen set again last night, changing filters, blah blah blah. It just like it just doesn't want to end. Up to eight last night, yeah. Go switch the Jenny on and then you land up doing repairs. So oh god. Anyway, let's stop moaning now, let's enjoy the day. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful day today. Stunning. Yeah, everybody working in this little police station. Little hotel. Little restaurant here. Yeah. Very basic. Some R and R at last. Yes. Much needed. Much, much needed. Cheers. Cheers. Now, as you can see, we've been calling the island Tobago, but it's actually Tobago. <laughs> Some big thunderstorms starting to rear their heads up. It's been really hot this morning. It's definitely going to be a few thunders this afternoon with the fish underneath the jet here. Time to get back to the boat. Tied up next to this little panga here. Okay, hold hold the boat, hold the boat. Okay. Got it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Gracias. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Even a little jetty. Pretty little place. Funny, this is where we met Paula and came on the first trip when we. Remember when you came with the patrons? Patrons, yeah. No, we never got off from the land in those days, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we actually first threw anchor this side and then end up throwing anchor where Lyra is now on the other side. Don't know how much you'll see from here, but we're on the other side of that little spit. Yeah, this is the other side of Tobago Island, and you look at this chaos towards the city with all the boats. Freaking nuts! So our trip ashore hadn't done anything to alleviate the generator problem. So in next week's episode... So here we are again. We've had such a run of fucking bad luck, it's just unbelievable. The generator decided to pack up the other day. Now I had a mechanic in here and uh, he's pulled all the injectors. We've freaking done everything. Air filters, oil filters, fuel filters, ray cores. Still can't get the motor running. So now they've pulled the injectors and uh, and the lift pump that's been sent to be calibrated. But yeah, we got bits and pieces lying everywhere. Man, I just just want to get back freaking home. Bad enough. Yeah, everybody who looks at sailing from the outside thinks it's a jolly affair. But yeah, when there's a combination of all these factors, weather arrangements, difficulties, it can be a little bit much to bear. Take my hat off to Kerry for sticking it out. She's an absolute trooper. To join us next week, subscribe and see how we work our way through this mess and get through the Panama Canal and route to the United States. Make sure you join us next week. We'll catch you then. Thanks for watching.